I think something that's so fascinating about this, and I think, Zach, we talked about this in the early days, is you guys are helping folks build things easier, but yourself had to build things as well. Mm -hmm. And the way you guys set up a lot of the, the ramp up for the manufacturing lines was really interesting. Any stories for how you guys thought about even prototyping your E0 boards or some of these that you can, you can share of like the, the common things that set you back or, or, or like how you even thought about prototyping it yourself? So it's I like think- the meta layer, right? Yeah. The, so we were, we were part of Hacks, yeah. um, which is an incubator for hardware startups based in Shenzhen. Yeah. Um, and so we lived in Shenzhen for a couple months back in 2013. And that, I think, really changed our approach towards both prototyping and manufacturing because we were, we were prototyping in China. In China, you can do a PCB spin for like 10 bucks, <laughs> yeah, 24 hour delivery. I think my coffee costs more on the way over yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Um, whereas here, 24 hour delivery on a PCB spin is like $1,000. And so uh, one of the interesting things to point out is, okay, so it's literally cheaper to send your engineers to Shenzhen and have them work there for two weeks doing rapid iterations of your circuit board than it is to do have the, all the iterations done in the US. It's also cheaper just to get it done in China and ship it and FedEx it over. So now, you know, we're no longer in China. We have a team in Shenzhen. Yeah. And now when we do prototyping, we have our team in Shenzhen does the PCB uh, iteration. iteration. And then they like, we'll, we'll FedEx designs back and forth from the US to China. It. Um, but it's way cheaper than getting it done in the US. Yeah. Um, and then we're also generally, we're working with uh, our manufacturers. We don't necessarily get our PCBs done by the same companies because the companies that do low volume PCB spins for prototyping and our high volume production are different. So we'll start with the low volume guys and then if there's a design feature that means that we have to use our PCB manufacturer at scale, so a good example is radio. Um, uh, the antenna circuit um, has, to be, uh, um, has to be very carefully measured. And so we need to use the substrate from our mass manufacturer yep. to test the design. Not just for the prototyping one or the low volume. Right, and so you end up with sort of sequencing like, okay, let's get the the rough edges of the design done with our uh, our fast turn PCB friends. Yep. And then let's get the fine details done with our manufacturing partner, which costs a little more and we can only do larger runs. Yeah. MOQs or whatever that it's, it's larger. Right. And did you always have that supply chain set up or was that a lesson that really came about over the four years? Like, it seems like a very logical thing now, but yeah. hindsight's always twenty twenty. and Yeah, it, there was some gradual growth, definitely. Yeah. Definitely, yeah, lessons. I mean, I, we, we do things now, for instance, that, let's say we do dual sourcing. All of our designs come from, we have two factories. Yeah. Um, and we didn't have that early on. And we're working with a factory who we've had a great relationship with, but there were some, there were some problems and we didn't really have any leverage. Um, and so once we started dual sourcing, we now have a mix where we say, you get some volume and you get some volume. And then you're tuning each one. Yeah, and there's this sort of natural competition that starts to come into play, which is like, you might get more volume or less volume, depending on how good of a job you do for us. And if you screw up a couple times, we're gonna start pushing more of the volume the other direction. Yeah. And so it ends up really strengthening our supply chain and eliminating risk in the same way that if you have, if you host servers, you don't wanna have a single point of failure. Not everything's in EC2 have... West, you're gonna have, you're gonna have a fallover. Right. Scaling from 10 to 1,000 to a million units is one of the toughest challenges hardware companies face. I'm curious to hear your experience in scaling to high volume production, so add your thoughts in the comments section below, and be sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos to take you into the world of hardware generation.